Hi, everybody. Hope you can hear us okay. Welcome to the Battle of the Bartenders. I'm Sarah Blaskovich, food writer for the Dallas Morning News, and I am so thrilled to be drinking with you at happy hour today. Um, I am joined by Trevor Landry, the Director of Brand Development for Zephyr Gin. You can see him there. Um, and soon we will have another bartender. His name is Ben Baxter. He's the Houston Area Market Manager for Zephyr Gin. And we're going to do a little bit of a battle between Trevor and Ben and see whose cocktail we like the best. Um, first, while you just come in and start to join us, grab a couple of extra things. Um, if you got your sourced gin um, uh, bag with all of your cocktail ingredients, get all those things out. If you didn't, no problem. You can watch with us and hear about what everything tastes like. Um, if you bought some items yourself, you can also do this cocktail mixing yourself. Um, and if you are listening to us after we have recorded this, you're going to be able to smell and almost taste um, everything that we are tasting and you'll feel like you're really here. So we're so glad everyone's here. Now grab a couple extra things. Um, anybody who wants to, who will be tasting gin, grab a little glass, maybe a wine glass, a champagne glass. This is a little um, beer taster glass that I got from a beer flight. Um, before we mix our cocktails, um, Trevor's got a champagne glass. Before we mix our cocktails, we're gonna put the gin in here. We're gonna smell it and taste it and Trevor's gonna teach us a little bit about what we have. A couple other things to get, um, some ice. If you're mixing with us, please go get some ice so you can have cold drinks. And also we need a knife and a peeler if you've got a lemon and if you're gonna get into this lemon. Um, so go grab those things right now and uh, we will talk just a little bit. You won't miss anything if you need to take 45 seconds and run to get a glass, some ice, or a knife and a peeler for your lemon. Um, okay, so today we are talking about gin. I think this is very exciting. Um, I don't know how many of you out there identify as wine drinkers, as tequila drinkers, as bourbon drinkers. Um, we all, by the end of this, are probably going to identify as gin drinkers as well. And what a lot of folks don't know is there's so much you can do with gin. Um, it has a lot of interesting flavor profiles. It works really nicely inside cocktails. Now, I am not the gin expert though, but we brought someone who is. So this is Trevor Landry, like I said, Director of Brand Development for Zephyr Gin. Um, and Trevor, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, yes. Thank you guys for joining us. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Awesome. Um, so yes, uh, as Sarah said, I'm the Director of Brand Development for, uh, for our locally owned Zephyr Gin right here out of Dallas. Uh, you may ask yourself, how does one uh, get to be a director of, of brand development for Zephyr Gin. In my case, I was a beverage director here in Dallas for about 10 years. And I learned about the brand uh, as a buyer uh, behind uh, my bars mixing cocktails. And I, I met the, the family that runs it and I met the people involved. And uh, it's a very cool and unique product that we're gonna, we're gonna tell you about. And uh, so I've actually been uh, full-time with Zephyr Gin for the last two and a half years. Uh, so that's, that's my background. Awesome. It is so neat to have local folks talking to us about spirits, Trevor. Um, and we're all going to learn a little bit more about this brand. Um, okay, so before we taste our gin, hopefully everybody's back. You've got your glass, you've got your knife and peeler, and you've got your ice. Or if you're just listening along, just come with an open mind and come have some fun and cheers us for happy hour. Um, Trevor, talk a little bit about how gin is made, how it might be different than other spirits. Excellent. So, yeah, um, before we talk about Zephyr, I wanna talk about gin as a category because it can be a little misunderstood. Um, I know here in the US and especially in us Texans, we, we like our vodka and we like our whiskey and we like our tequila. Sometimes gin is not quite at the top of the list, but it might surprise some of you to know that up until 1967, gin was a leading spirit in the US and it was in 1967 that vodka sales surpassed gin sales. So once upon a time, we, were very, we very much were a gin drinking country. Um, in England, as you might guess, gin is the number one spirit. And the, the number one uh, places to, to where gin is, is consumed per capita would be Spain, those Spanish gin and tonics, which you see around town. Mm -hmm. And uh, surprisingly in the Philippines, they like their gin as well. So it's very much a global spirit. Uh, premium gin especially is on the rise here uh, in the US. And it's because of cocktails and our interest in getting back to classic craft cocktails. Um, you know, what we're going to do today, uh, certainly we're going to try gin on its own. And if, if there are gin drinkers out there that just prefer gin on the rocks or gin martinis, that's, that's all fine and good. But I always say that gin needs a cocktail. And what I mean by that is gin really needs to be presented in a balanced, 
uh, fresh cocktail to, to a first time gin drinker for them to actually understand what's going on. Um, so in the case of gin, it's really the, it's defined by the juniper berry. And so I have some juniper berries right here and it's actually not a berry at all, even though we say juniper berry, it is a conifer. A conifer is the seed of a cone. Uh, and this is what gives gin that, uh, that pine tree scent. Some of you may, may love that and some of you may still be on the fence about that, but there's other botanicals involved uh, as well. Um, it was uh, Galen, the Greek physician that actually was first documented as adding juniper to liquid for medicinal purposes. Uh, he wrote that juniper berries cleanse the liver and the kidneys. And so that's why we have juniper introduced. Uh, Italian monks uh, in 10,000 AD, we've got them writing about using juniper as an, uh, an anti-swelling uh, um, to, to try to cleanse the body as well. Uh, then we have uh, the Dutch. Now the Dutch were the first ones to really take uh, juniper spirit and make it from to take it, take it from medicine to a recreational practice of, of drinking. And they called it Jennifer or Geneva. And that actually means juniper in Dutch. Uh, Rotterdam, Amsterdam were big trade uh, centers at the time. And so we, we had Geneva as a commercial product. We had the trade routes going. We had the English going up to help the Dutch in their Dutch war for independence. And then we also had William of Orange, the Dutch born prince who became the King of England and he brought his distilling habits with him to England. And so that is how the English kind of took hold of this. And so they took Geneva, they got rid of the end of the word. They just started calling it gen or gin as we know today. Yeah. And they introduced that London dry style which is kind of the, the definitive style that we know today. And it just means that there's it's juniper forward. Um, generally it's distilled from, from an English wheat or a grain. And there's some other botanicals that, that go with that. And so that's kind of how all that, that went about. Now, when we think about you know, primary spirits, gin is actually very different in the way that the flavor comes to be. So let's take bourbon. It's really about the fermentation of that sweet corn. Uh, rye, it's the spiciness of the rye. Tequila, it's the quality of, of that tequila and how, how, how many years it is old. With gin, the flavor doesn't come into play until after distillation. So we're taking a neutral grain spirit and we're adding flavors in the botanicals. So, you know, if you take that neutral grain spirit, which in, in our case, it's, it's a 96% uh, um, pure product, just a fermented English wheat that's columned, it's stilled, you know, that's the purest way and the cleanest way to get this high proof, really tasteless spirit. If you wanted to make vodka from that, it's easy. You just add water, bring it down to drinking proof, and then you have vodka. Uh, I like to kind of uh, use the analogy, if you think about water and vodka, then you would think about gin as tea. It's really the neutral grain spirit that's infused with botanicals. Mm. Uh, so we talked about juniper as the main botanical. Uh, our Zephyr gin, Zephyr gin and Zephyr black has seven botanicals. Some gins have as few as four, some have 47. We have seven. So we have coriander here which is often used in gins. And this is the seed of the cilantro plant. We have lemon peel for that, uh, that citrus. Usually gin has the pepper and the citrus going on. We have orris root and angelica root as stabilizing agents and bittering agents. And then what really makes Zephyr unique and what we're known for is our elderberry and elderflower. Mm -hmm. uh, the elderberry grows on the elderflower bush. They grow uh, hand in hand. And you guys know elderberry as kind of a, a health remedy as well. I think there were none, none on the shelves about a year ago. <laughs> uh, and uh, so elderberry and a little bit of elderflower is, is what we make uh, our name on. Um, any, any questions so far? Are you guys with me? Yeah, that's, this is super interesting, Trevor. Thanks. I like the history a lot. Good. Okay. Cool. So we know what's in, um, we, we have an idea of all the elements that are in the Zephyr gin. Um, should we taste? Sure. Let me just tell you quickly how we actually get the flavor into the gin. Oh, sure. Um, so it's batch distillation. It's, it's copper spot pot still. Um, this is all distilled over in Langley Distillery in Birmingham, England. So this is made in England uh, and then imported into the U.S. Um, this, the Langley Distillery is a, is a historically traditional distillery. It was a brewery starting in 1902. Then they started distilling gin uh, in 1920 and, and up until now. Uh, so the, the batch distillation takes three days. What they do is they'll add that neutral grain spirit that we talked about, a little bit of water, 
and then carefully measured amounts of these botanicals. They'll turn on the steam jacket and let it soak overnight. And that releases the essential oils from all of this into the distillate. They'll come in in the morning, they'll crank up the heat, and then we have an actual distillation going on. And if you know anything about distillation, we're basically separating the alcohol from the water. Alcohol has a lower boiling point from water. So we have alcoholic vapor that's coming off of this liquid and it's collected through the swan's neck into another container with a cooling mechanism. And so you have steam, alcoholic steam coming up and then falling into a separate container, turning back into liquid. And so we have this high proof spirit. We cut the heads and the tails, just like you would if you're talking about bourbon or tequila or anything else. Um, and that's, that's how we get our, basically our starting point for Zephyr. Then we take that and we mix it with a little more neutral grain spirit. And then in the case of Zephyr Black, this is 88 proof. So we, we add water to get it down to our 88 drinking proof. And then we bottle it and that's it. And that's, it's considered a London dry, uh, which just means that it's juniper forward and it's, it's uh, nothing has been done to it after distillation. Mm -hmm. In the case of Zephyr, we're bringing it down to 80 proof with water. Uh, which is kind of your normal vodka drinking proof, um, you know, what most spirits are. Gin's usually a little bit higher, but this is our 80 proof Western style gin. And we do add a little bit of elderberry extract before bottling. Uh, and so that's what gives it its unique flavor as well. Mm -hmm. So now I think we, we should taste. I know some of you might not have both products. Um, you might have one or the other and that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and taste both. Um, let's start with Zephyr Black just because this is the traditional gin taste. And pour yourself just a little bit. You don't need a lot. If you're used to tasting wine, you probably need almost one fourth of the amount because this is, this is straight alcohol. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be a little spicy. I've got mine, as you can see that I've had it in the freezer. Uh, gin gets a different mouthfeel when it's super cold. And so mm -hmm. you may not have prepared for that, but in the future, keeping spirits in the freezer that you're gonna sip on their own uh, is, is actually a really good idea. Um, so we're going to try Zephyr Black. We're going to smell it first. And I, I do get some of that elderberry in there, but I also get a lot of lemon, a lot of pepper, and of course the juniper, that Christmas tree, that pine tree forest. If you're using a glass, if you don't have a small opening on the top, you can kind of use your hands to try to make sure that out the, the smell doesn't escape, but you should be. Oh, that helps a lot, Trevor. That's all incredible. those things, yeah. Even if you're at home smelling whatever you're drinking, that's okay too. You guys are doing great. So generally the rule is two tastes. The first one's gonna give you a little bit of the sting. It's gonna coat your tongue, just a small taste. Again, not like wine or beer. You're just, you're just getting a little sample of it. You can, you can move it around in your mouth. Uh, you, know, you can spit if you like, but I'm not going to. And then you're gonna take a second taste to try to get the, the, full, the full flavor. So uh, everybody, Zephyr Black, this is our 88 Proof London Dry, cheers. Now there is some spice on that, but you can taste all the other things going on. Um, there's certainly a, 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 you know, a, a fruit forward note and that is our elderberry. Um, you definitely get the lemon peel, a little bit of peppery burn from that alcohol. This is our, you know, our Zephyr Black is more for classic cocktails. And so this is for the, the gin purist. We have uh, kind of our list of recommended classics here, the Martini, the Negroni, the Vesper, the Martinez. Uh, even a strong last word or a traditional gin and tonic. Um, that's what we use with Zephyr Black. So now let's move on to Zephyr if you have some. Okay. Now we're going from 88 proof down to 80 proof. So with the lack of that alcoholic burn, you're gonna get more of those fruit forward flavors that come to the forefront. Another smell, and right away I smell that that's almost completely different. Um, I get very much, uh, you know, berries and summer fruits and flowers. Just a wonderful bouquet of things. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the two tastes again. Cheers. And that one is easier to drink on its own simply because it's lower in alcohol and there's a little more water in it. Um, Zephyr is really great for our more springtime and uh, citrus forward cocktails. It pairs really well with citrus and herbs. So things like French 75s and sours. Um, 
you know, anything that's colorful, a south side that Ben's about to make in a minute, uh, a bee's knees with honey, any of these things are delicious. And if you're wondering about the name in the bottle, Zephyr is based on the Greek god uh, of, the, of the gentle breeze from the west, Zephyrus. Uh, the west wind has always uh, carried people to new and interesting places. And so Zephyr is a testament to living, uh, living life with the philosophy, you never know. And if you've seen any of our billboards around town, you may already know that. That's cool. What do you think? Yeah, I like this, Trevor. I like the idea. Um, I was not a skilled enough gin drinker to be able to pick a certain gin for a certain drink. You know, like I think if I was going to make a gin drink, I would grab gin and make it. And I love the idea that, you know, there's the, the, the Zephyr Black, for instance, is better for these classic cocktails. And then the Zephyr is more what I would consider like a party drink. You know, like you're having people over, you're going to make batch cocktails, maybe you're going to mix them in a pitcher um, or you're going to make a cocktail that's beautiful, that's, you know, pink because it has some kind of fruit in it, or maybe you're putting a flower in it or a lot of garnish that seems better for the Zephyr and seems like more of a, uh, I don't know, like party drink, like a show drink. Yeah, I'm with you. And we also went over the vodka drink of the Zephyr because it doesn't have that, that juniper bite to it. Um, honest, we're going to make some, some cool cocktails today, but honestly, a Zephyr and soda with a squeeze of lemon is delicious. Um, and sure. so that's just an easy one to order at a bar when, uh, you don't trust the bartenders. And of course, one more question, Trevor, before we start mixing cocktails, um, a gin and tonic, right? This is, we, we are seeing some Spanish restaurants around town with, you know, not just a gin and tonic, but, but a, a whole gin and tonic menu, which I think is exciting and fun. Um, and maybe a cocktail that we see, of course, the gin and tonic is not a new cocktail, but I'm seeing more um, nuanced gin and tonics on restaurant menus around town. Um, which gin do you suggest for a gin and tonic? And is it as simple as gin and, you know, what brand of tonic? No, it's not as simple. And honestly, I mean, you know, the, the, gin, the Spanish gin and tonic is playing off of the botanicals that you just smelled and that you just tasted. And so we're mm -hmm. emphasizing one or emphasizing another with the garnish and the aroma that you get on the top of that gin and tonic. Tonic, tonic was never as sweet as it is today when it's, when it's the cheap stuff in the bottle. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be quinine forward, not as much sugar. Um, the, the long story about the tonic was that it was invented to, uh, for the British sailors uh, to, to fight off malaria. And that was actually a medicinal as well, but that turned into the bottled product that we have today. When you look at some of the premium tonics out there, they've cut the sugar back. They've put more of the actual flavor in there. It's not as artificial. Um, and a lot of bars, as you said, with the Spanish gin and tonics, they're making their own tonic syrup from, from quinine from scratch and from chin, cinchona bark. So um, it's just getting to be all natural. So you can, you can taste, you can feel, you know, you put something like cilantro or basil uh, or, you know, juniper berries in, inside of a gin and tonic, that flavor is going to just come out more in the gin. So to answer your original question, either one works for a gin and tonic. Uh, I would say that Zephyr Black will make more of a traditional, maybe a stiffer gin and tonic that'll be more juniper, lemon pepper forward. And then as you were saying, kind of a summer, a more festive drink, you can take Zephyr and have more of a laid back and more floral gin and tonic. So there's really no wrong. It's just what you're in the mood for. That's awesome. I love the idea of putting cilantro or basil in your gin and tonic too, Trevor. This just makes me think that if anybody is at home cooking tonight or this week and you have some gin and you have some tonic, mix them together and then put, you know, put something green in there and see what it tastes like. We, you know, we have cilantro and basil in my fridge right now, for instance. So uh, cool idea. I like that a lot, especially if you're cooking with it already. Um, okay, so we're going to make two cocktails. Uh, tell me which of you wants to go first. We're going to throw it over to Ben. He's our uh, area manager in Houston. He's been, uh, he's on his fourth year with Zephyr. He, uh, he's been spreading the Zephyr love in Houston for quite a while. And uh, he's been kind enough to join us and show us how to make a, a Southside cocktail. Okay, so as bef Jen, Ben, before you um, start, for everybody watching, Ben's gonna tell us what to do and we're gonna do it in real time. Um, if you don't have ingredients, that's okay too. You can just take some notes and make some of this at home at a different date, um, you know, or just listen along, learn a little bit and then we'll all taste it together. Okay, Ben, take it away. All right, great. Also, I'm Ben, by the way, from Houston. Um, the great thing about a South Side is, I mean, it's versatile. Um, I mean, if you have limes, if you have mint laying around the house, I mean, use them. One thing that I figured out, um, like you as well, um, I'm not a great gardener. 
but my mint has grown just absolutely rampant at my yep. house. So I'm, <laughs> I have quite a bit of mint syrup on hand um, at any given time. And I believe y'all have a mint syrup with, um, with your cocktail kits uh, today. Um, and there's a couple different ways you can really kind of tweak uh, a classic salsa. Um, if you like a little bit more citrus, if you like it a little bit more sweet, then go ahead and, you know, kind of do your own thing, honestly. Um, it's, like I said, a very, very approachable cocktail, easy, classic, and with Zephyr, the, our 80 proof Zephyr, um, it's very, very approachable. Like Trevor said, to elaborate a little bit more on that, um, it cuts that kind of piney, kind of Christmas tree taste of most of your London dries. Um, it's a very, very, very approachable spirit. So if you guys do have a shaker, uh, recommend, honestly, even if you don't have a shaker, you can, I mean, you can use a couple of glasses together. Just, you really want to see that friction and you want the dilution of, of the ice, basically. So I like mine a little bit more juniper, I mean, a little bit more citrus forward. So I use a full ounce of lime juice. And then I back it down to 0.75 of um, simple syrup. And then if you do have plenty of mint laying around your garden, like I do, then make sure that you peel your leaves away. Don't get the stock in there. Ben, let me ask you one thing. For those following along at home, we have a pre-mixed. This is the lemon juice, simple, and Cointreau in one. And we have gin right here. Sarah, we that's, the, that's, uh, that's the, the, shell, the, the other one, the Delilah. Oops, I've got the Delilah, sorry. You're ahead <laughs> of us. Oops. Not a problem, not a problem. Let me, let me grab the other. Okay, so everybody, we still do have pre-mixed everything. So after you do yours, Ben, will you tell us what denominations of each? Yeah, of course. Okay, great. So add all of your ingredients. Um, so you do have the mint syrup uh, yourselves. And if you do have a shaker, I would recommend. Honestly, a lot of people per prefer a south side up in a cocktail coupe such as this. That's more of your classic south side. Mm. But since it is spring, summertime, obviously the hot summer months, um, I would recommend actually doing it on the rocks with a little splash of Topo Chico or whatever seltzer or sparkling water you prefer. Um, it's definitely going to be extremely refreshing for the summer. <laughs> All right, so we have our ingredients in our shaker. And give it a couple, couple hard shakes. Okay, so Ben, for those of us just mixing the already pre-mixed stuff with the gin, what denominations are we doing in our jigger? In your jigger? It's two ounces of gin, and it's a one and a half ounces of the, the syrup. Okay, and right. for everybody looking at your jigger, if you've got one of these, there's a little side and a big side, and the big side is two ounces, correct? Correct. Correct. So typically for my up cocktails, I would use a fine strainer, but I mean, not a lot of people have a fine strainer at their homes. So it's not a big deal if you have a little bit of that kind of mints leftovers in there. And I like to give, I like to wake the mints up a little bit. Get the aromas in it. And here we are. Mint, lime, sugar, super easy to make at home and very, very comparable to the elderberry and the elderflower and delicious. And Ben, we, we sometimes do our south sides with uh, a splash of soda and sometimes without. And so mm -hmm. there, there is Topo Chico, I think in the cocktail kit for those that wanna kind of make it more of a refreshing style cocktail. Ooh, that's a fun um, thought. So anybody, if it's not too late, I made two because 
Um, my dad is watching my children in the back room, if I'm being real honest, and he gets a cocktail. He deserves one um, when we're finished with this happy hour. So I made one with Topo and I hadn't put Topo in the other one yet. So it might be fun for anybody at home, you know, kind of experimenting. Try the one without the Topo and try the one with, see what, which one you like better. Give the other one to your babysitter. <laughs> Sounds good. Just kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And if you didn't get to shake because you don't have a shaker, if you do, if, it, if, if that mix for some reason is a little bit tart or sweet to you, adding a splash of regular water will, will kind of simmer down all of those uh, notes because that's what the shaking would have done was add just a little bit of dilution. Mm -hmm. Trevor and Ben, um, can you take a sip of one of these and kind of just talk through some of the notes? What are you tasting? What are you smelling? You know. Honestly, I haven't had a... I haven't had a south side with um, sparkling water at Topo Chico in a long, long time. And this is delicious. Um, light, refreshing, mint, citrus. You get the elderberry, the elderflower notes, um, and a lot of the citrus notes. And there's still juniper that's quite prevalent as well. Yeah, this is a, I like it with a Topo too. And I feel like it is a, it's a patio drink or it's an outdoor drink, right? Like mm -hmm. I could sit by the pool and drink two of these things pretty quick. Absolutely. Um, we do frozen south sides quite often Ooh, and they are good. delicious. Yeah, you need to go to a bar to find that or have a friend with a margarita machine. That friend, that <laughs> special kind of friend True. right there. <laughs> and the south side is one of the classic cocktails. It's kind of fallen off as being uh, something that's well known, um, but it, it works really well with our Zephyr gin, uh, but it is a gin classic cocktail with gin, citrus and, and, and mint. Mm -hmm. These are good. People ones. say that it was an um, Al Capone's drink of choice, apparently. Oh, that's a fun fact. I like that, Ben. It, 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 there's a couple different stories, but it may come, the South Side may come from the South Side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's where the Al Capone thing comes in. Yep. Oh, I like that. Cool. Um, okay, so for everybody uh, drinking, listening, watching, Here's your first cocktail. That's the South Side. Take a good sip of it um, or remember what these bartenders have said if you're not making it yourself. We're going to move on to the second um, drink and then I'm going to pick the winner because as the host, I guess I just get to. Um, someday, wouldn't it be cool if we were all in the same bar together, sampling with these bartenders, cheersing, talking about it, and then voting on our own winner. Um, we can dream about doing that someday when we're all comfortable being in the same room together. That just sounds like an awesome thing that we could do for our Dallas Morning News readers. Um, until then, you got me here tasting and picking, so stick with me. Um, okay, Ben, thank you. Cheers. There's the South thank Side. Um, and Trevor, let's make your cocktail now. Cool. Okay, so the Delilah. Uh, this is also a classic cocktail. I am going to use Zephyr Black. Uh, this cocktail would be fine with either Zephyr Black or Zephyr. So if you only have one or if you'd prefer to use one or the other, I don't think that you can screw it up. The Zephyr Black is going to make it more of a, a gin forward cocktail with those juniper notes that we talked about. And Zephyr would make it just a little bit uh, more well-rounded and a little bit more uh, kind of taken back on the juniper, um, but either one will work fine. Uh, so this is, we're calling it the Delilah. It is also known as the White Lady or the Chelsea Sidecar. Uh, the Sidecar, because the Sidecar was invented first and this is in the family of kind of Sidecar drinks. Uh, a Sidecar, if, if you, you may know, is with brandy, uh, Cointreau and lemon. So we're just kind of subbing out uh, the gin. And gin and gin and brandy, gin and cognac were very interchangeable in classic cocktails because they were both very uh, readily available. They were both drunk by the upper class and they were served in hotel bars. And so there are many, many different cocktails that have a, a cognac or brandy version and a gin version, which sounds funny because one's a dark spirit that's been barrel aged and one has no aging and they are very different, but they usually both turn out really excellent with the same uh, simple kind of builds. Um, so this one, uh, Harry uh, McElhone, London Circo Club, 1919. Uh, he made one with, and this sounds kind of weird too, but creme de menthe was a big thing in the cocktail days. And I think it's just because the sweetness and having that mint flavor be bottled was something that, that people couldn't believe. So it was actually made with creme de menthe, lemon and Cointreau. I don't think that that would be an award-winning cocktail. Um, what, so Harry opened his bar, at, uh, his bar in Paris in 1923 and he changed the, the, the creme de menthe out for gin. And so it was equal parts gin, Cointreau, 
and Lennon. And then it was a different Harry, Harry Craddock, who at the American Bar uh, at the Savoy in London, he wrote the Savoy cocktail book in 1930 and he doubled that gin volume. So that is closer to the recipe that we're gonna use today. So two parts gin, one part Cointreau, one part lemon. And in your mix, we've got just a quarter ounce of simple syrup because I believe that this cocktail just needs a little bit of sweetness to cut that tart. Um, so your mix is gonna be uh, three quarter ounce of Cointreau, three quarter ounce of lemon and one quarter ounce of uh, simple syrup. So that all equals uh, what? 1.75 ounces. So you can start with your mix and do 1.75 ounces. There should be markers on your jigger to do either one ounce and three quarter or one and a half and a quarter. Um, I'm gonna build this from scratch. So you guys go ahead and dump yours in. I'm gonna do three quarter ounce Cointreau and three quarter ounce lemon juice. And just a one quarter ounce of simple syrup. I know sugar is the enemy, but these cocktails need to be balanced. Uh, and then we're gonna do, uh, this is calling for one, one and a half ounces of Zephyr Black. Again, if you'd like to use Zephyr, if that's what you have, it'll still be delicious. And so then I'm gonna add ice. And if you don't have the means to shake, that's just fine. You can build this on the rocks. I'm gonna build this up in a coop because that's traditional way. Uh, but again, home bartending, you use what you have. And so if you wanna build this just you know, on the rocks and stir it up with a straw or a, a stir spoon, that's fine too. But I'm gonna give this a good shake. Got a nice frosty shaker now. I feel like there's nothing better than the sound of ice being shaken. Like you know, that. you can judge a cocktail program when you walk into a bar based on that sound, whether you hear it or whether you don't. To me, it, it signals to like a jovial quality, right? It means that people are together and, you know, drinking and having fun. Well, it's, it's that, but it's also that cocktails do need proper dilution, right? And so yeah. you do need to get that ice melting in the drink, you know, generally with, with syrups and, uh, and citrus, you want a shaken cocktail. And then with cocktails that are more spirit forward, you just want to chill it without diluting it. And so that's where stirring comes in with martinis and Manhattans and old fashioned. So there's a reason for everything, but I'm going to strain this out into my coupe. Can you hold up your coupe, Trevor, and, and show us what that glass looks like? I love the shape of those. I feel like every bar needs those. I agree. And so we have our cocktail here, but uh, I'd like some aromatics when I drink it. So I'm going to take a little peel of lemon. If you don't have a peeler, you can take a knife and be careful with your fingers. We don't need any injuries here, but just kind of take a slice down the side. And I'm going to take a citrus peeler and give myself kind of a nice thick peel. And the way to properly do this is you take the outside of the skin, you face it down, and you're gonna squeeze it to try to get the oils off of the outside of the, the garnish. And those, you should see little specks hitting the top of your drink if you're doing it right. Yep. And it's not just for show. It changes the whole dynamic of when you drink a cocktail because you're not, you're, you're not only tasting, but you're smelling those lemon oils as well. So you can either discard that or you can just put it right on the top like I did. And whether you're drinking on the rocks, out of a coupe, out of a plastic cup, uh, out of a shot glass, uh, cheers uh, to Delilah. Cheers. What are you tasting, Trevor? And what are you smelling? So this is kind of a category of uh, drinks that are not quite sours because there's an extra added alcohol component and a liqueur component, which gives this a little bit of tartness. Um, I'm tasting an overwhelming zest of lemon. I definitely wouldn't drink this as fast as Ben's Southside. This is more of a sipper. Mm -hmm. um, I would say this is probably the drink that I would have uh, mm -hmm. before dinner, before I switch to wine, or before I switch to more of a, of a real spirit forward sipper, but not quite as light as a French 75. Um, but maybe one, you know, I would only have one of these, maybe two at the most, whereas something with Topo or something as light as a Southside, you could have 
it's, it, it, you know, several. So more of something you would enjoy and it might take you 30 to 45 minutes to an hour to finish this. Um, that's why we're in a coop and not in the rocks because it won't sit there and melt in front of you. Um, but Smart. it's just, Cointro is known for having that orange zest and we've, I've added the lemon citrus. So this is just a citrus blast. And then the gin actually kind of mellows out that citrus um, and gives you some other things to think about. The juniper, uh, the coriander, some of those herbal notes. And so the fact that gin does have that uh, herbaceous and botanical quality, it really does lend itself well to anything citrus when the proportions are correct. Okay, so um, for each of these cocktails, and either of you can answer this, uh, can batch them? And by that, I mean, can you make larger quantities in a pitcher or even individuals? I'm trying to think if, if somebody's someday having people over um, or having an event and they pick, they want to serve gin cocktails, um, which we now know are more interesting than a vodka cocktail. Um, they're the kind of cocktail that I think most drinkers might enjoy and there's a lot you can do with it. Can you batch both of these, make them in advance? Um, is there anything you might do? Like, let's say you can batch them. Do you leave something off? Like do, would your guests add their own mint? Um, or would you, you know, how do you make this sort of interactive, but also an interesting party drink? Sure, Trevor, would you like to elaborate or would you like no, to go take for it? it? Um, so Trevor has come up with a fantastic sangria, a uh, blueberry mint sangria um, in Dallas. And it's, it's phenomenal, it's batch. And honestly, I mean, Anything citrus based is very, very easy to batch and you just make it to taste. I mean, it's not gonna last multiple days, um, but just, you know, kind of run with it. I mean, it's very, very, very easy to batch. So, so my answer would be yes, citrus is delicate. Um, alcohol was actually came about to be a preservative. Um, so, it. you know, you, you, you put, something in alcohol and it's got enough alcohol content, it's gonna sit, you know, that's why we can keep a bottle of gin on a back bar, it's not gonna change. Now wine, it will, we all know it will change with, with oxidation because the alcohol content isn't high enough. Uh, vermouth, 16, 17%, it's right there on the edge, but anything above 20%. So it really depends on if your cocktail, the whole thing is above that 17, 18, 19% marker. But if you keep it in, the, if it's not like a batch south side, if you keep it in the fridge, or like we talked about earlier, if you keep it in a frozen machine, it's gonna be just fine, um, especially for a, a two or three or four or five day period. Um, so with, if, if you keep something in the trunk of your car, yeah, it's probably gonna spoil. But if you take care of it um, or you batch it that day, you're generally gonna be fine. Now I would say leave ice out of a batch at home because that over time is gonna sit and change the whole thing. And I would, I would make mint syrup from scratch if you're doing a South Side, so you basically, a lot of people are scared about what simple syrup is. And, oh, I don't want to make that as simple syrup. Simple syrup is equal parts sugar and water. You heat up water, whether it's on the stove or in the microwave, you measure out the same amount of sugar, you put them together, you stir, that's simple syrup. It's really easy. You can keep it in a container in the fridge and, open, and pull it out when you need a quarter ounce, a half ounce for a cocktail. Um, you can make brown simple syrup. You can make honey syrup. You can really make anything um, similar to that. But it would, to make mint simple syrup, you would do the same thing, but then you would just steep mint into it like a tea and then strain the mint out. And then you have mint flavor in your simple. So you can either muddle cocktails to order like Ben did, mm -hmm. or you can have a mint simple syrup ready to go and make a large batch with that. That's cool. I, I think that any simple syrup with a little something extra in it is also... Um, it, it, that's kind of impressive for if you're if you're ever entertaining right you know you you offer people something that you made that and to Trevor's point making simple syrup is not hard at all if you can boil water you can make simple syrup yeah. um you know you can stick some mint he suggested but anything else that you want to put in there I think that would be neat if you had guests over and let's say you were just to mix two or three things um for each person's drink a mint simple syrup would be different um and special I love that idea. Okay. So you would you would batch it all up and then you would have ice and garnish on the side. And so you, huh? would, you would basically add ice to each glass and a garnish for each drink so people can help themselves or you can serve them. But that way that your, your batch that's sitting there is not changing flavor, it's not getting watered down, it's not changing any way. And it'll be good to use the next day if you don't use it all, so. Yeah, that's perfect. I like it. Um, I love this idea of this sort of 
effortless entertaining, right? Like you have a, you have a great idea and you want people to have fun, but you also, you, the host don't want to spend your whole time in the kitchen or your whole time behind the bar. Um, and I've, I've read a little about a lot of hosts like to offer their guests something to do that, you know, they can scoop their own ice, or maybe they can put as much simple syrup in their cocktail as they like to taste. Um, it gives people something to do when they arrive at an event. Um, and it also takes that sort of strain off of the host and makes this, you know, sort of, it, it, I love the idea that you could have uh, a party that feels effortless, that of course was very well thought of in advance. Um, okay, so I am going to taste each one of these one more time and I'm going to pick a winner. Not that it really matters because, you know, we're, we're all drinking gin here on a Tuesday at happy hour. So I, I like both of them very much, but I'm going to pick a winner. One more taste. This is the first one. This was the South Side with the Topo. I liked it with the Topo. I thought that was a, you know, just makes it kind of spritzy. And this is the Delilah. Okay, so I think the Delilah highlights the gin better. You taste more of it. And, um, and if you're interested in gin or interested in being interested in gin, if you're new to gin, I think that the Delilah is a good option. Um, the South Side is such an easy drinker that I will say the South Side is my winner. That is the kind of cocktail that I think, then you win. Sorry, Trevor, you did, you did a fabulous job. It's, it's hard to beat Ben, and it's really hard to beat the South Side. We already knew that, so. Yes. That's, it, why, that's why we make a good team. It's, yes. <laughs> the thing I like about the South Side is I believe that almost anybody, regardless of what they think they like to drink, might want to drink this. You know, so you've got beer drinkers who come into your house. You've got people who say they only want white wine or champagne. You've got folks who are vodka drinkers. Um, I think you could pour some of these. And most people would say that is delicious. And those of us who are headed toward patio season, headed toward pool season here in exactly. Texas, um, the South Side to me seems like a home run. And honestly, even if um, you don't have mint running rampant in your garden like we do, um, I mean, you can leave the mint out. Um, just add some citrus and make a little bit of a simple syrup at home. And it's a delicious gimlet, another classic cocktail, if you will. Yeah, good idea, Ben. I like that. Um, okay, we have a couple of questions for you guys and anybody who has questions, now's the time to ask them because we're gonna wrap up here. Um, Trevor, this one is for you. This reader wants to know um, where is Zephyr Gin headquartered? They didn't realize that it was a local company and they want, you know, it's not like anybody's gonna show up on your doorstep, but they wanna tell us a little bit about its localness, uh, where it is and where, where the spirit is distilled. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, so the company itself is based right here in Dallas. I'm coming to you live from our, our office here on Dragon Street in the design district. Uh -huh. If you've ever driven by, there's a bathtub in front that says Zephyr on there for bathtub gin, which is kind of a joke during the prohibition. Uh -huh. um, but we're here. We're here every day. We have a strong presence in Dallas and Houston. We're growing outside of Texas. Um, it's distilled over at Langley Distillery in Birmingham, England. So this is a, a gin that is distilled over in the UK and then it's imported in and our distributor handles uh, where it's brought into bars and restaurants. Um, we do very well here in Dallas and in Houston. Um, I would say that, that you would be hard pressed to walk into a, either a fine dining establishment or a craft cocktail bar and not see either a Zephyr a bottle on the back bar or find it on the cocktail menu. Um, and this, as you wanna uh, stock up your bar, we're at Total Wine, Specs, Goody Goody, and a whole bunch of independents uh, from South Dallas all the way to McKinney. So we're, we're we're here. Fabulous. It's cool to talk to local uh, folks who have a local company. That's that's great, Trevor. And it inspires me that because your gin is distilled in England, I wonder, I guess I've got like parties on the brain. We, I've been home for like a whole year now. Um, it would be neat to have a maybe like an England themed party, right? You could serve gin and you could serve you know, um, shortbread cookies and other like fun, you know, British things. That would be fantastic. I lived in London for a little bit um, in 2005. So that there's there's a lot you could do with that if you're just looking for- That for goes well with fish and chips. Order. Yeah. Um, okay, a um, couple other questions. Uh, first of all, Matt, I hear you. He thinks that I was wrong on the bartender competition and he tr thinks the Trevor's cocktail was better. So I hear you, Matt. and. Uh, and you, you go with that Delilah, it's also delicious. Um, one reader wants to know, does substituting lime for lemon turn it into a gimlet? Um, 
so a gimlet is generally with zephyr or sorry with gin lime and a little bit of, of simple or, or roses lime was was the, the original um yes a lot of these a lot of these cocktails you switch one ingredient and it's called something else um the south side we made it with lime today it actually if you look it up online half the recipes call for lemon um which is perfectly fine so there is this gray area with sour based cocktails uh, but yes, a, a gin, gin, lime, and simple is a gimlet. Gin, lime, and simple and mint is the south side. Um, as far as the the white lady or the Delilah goes, you know, this is the same build as basically a margarita where you have primary spirit, uh, Cointreau, and citrus, and a little bit of sweetener. Um, it's really simple. It's uh, similar to a Cosmopolitan with vodka, lime, Cointreau, and just the addition of cranberry juice. So all of these cocktails, they, you just add one thing or take away one thing or switch the citrus around and you have something called something else. Yeah, then you have my favorite spring summertime drink, which is in the east side. Just add a little bit of cucumber basically Ooh. to the south side and it's absolutely delicious. This, Trevor, all this like discussion of, you know, you add this and then you get that makes me think that if they don't exist, we need like cocktail flashcards. You know, it's like, you get these couple of ingredients and then you toss this in and it's called a south side and you toss this in and it's called an east side. This is um, this is something that maybe our Dallas Morning News readers need. Okay, cool. um, everybody, several people have asked if you can give us the exact proportions for each cocktail one more time, we'll go to Ben first and then to Trevor. And what we're looking for is not the pre-mixed batches that some of us got on our doorsteps, um, pretend that we don't have those and give us the exact ingredients for each of your um, cocktails. And for those listening, grab a pen um, and write these down now. And when we send you an email later, we can include these recipes in that email as well. But Ben, give us the, um, the, the proportions for the South Side. So I like mine a little bit more tart and a little bit more boozy. So I do two ounces of Zephyr Gin, not the London Dry. I like the 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 elder brand, the elderflower notes more so on this. And then I do a full ounce of lime juice, fresh squeezed preferably, mm -hmm. and then 0.75 of house-made simple syrup. Got it. And, and then mint if you want. If you add want some mint, mint correct. Just overtaking your garden like it is mine. <laughs> and don't forget about the garnish on that because you're putting mint in the drink, but you also want so, a, a bunch of fluffy mint on top of your drink so that you can smell the mint when you taste it. If you do a little experiment at home, do it without the mint and then put the mint on your glass. And as Ben said, kind of wake up the mint a little bit, your, your, your experience will change. Trevor is ab absolutely correct. Honestly, the, the aromatics, um, if you do just kind of wake up the mint just a little bit, I mean, it really changes the entire profile of the cocktail and it's really a key component. Yeah, I love that. Those of us who are students of food and drink like me, I always want to try those tests Right? That's why I did one of my cell sides with topo and one without to see which one I liked better. You should do all of that, but add your mint and don't add your mint and see what you like better. And also ask your nose and ask your mouth what you're tasting and smelling and what you like. Yeah, of um, course. I mean, when it comes down to it, it's, it's honestly personal preference, you know? Yeah, yeah. Love it. Um, okay, Trevor, um, tell us about the Delilah, each denomination of what goes in that. So we used uh, an ounce and a half of Zephyr Black. Um, you can use two ounces if you like. Again, personal preference. Uh, three quarter ounce of Cointreau or any premium triple sec. Um, you could try it with Grand Meunier or Salerno or a Pierre Ferrand dry Curacao. Um, but I would stick to something that's, that's more upscale and brand name. If you use that well triple sec, you're gonna kind of lose some of, some of what, what it offers. Uh, three quarter ounce of lemon juice. Again, fresh squeezed if you have it. Uh, and then just a quarter ounce of simple. And this would be another one to play with, whether you like it with or without. You could you can make a drink, you can split it in half, put just a couple of dashes of simple syrup in one and kind of see how it plays. But if you like things more on the tart side, leave the simple syrup out. If you like something that tastes to me just a little more balanced, I like to add just a little bit of simple syrup. And we, we talked about the sidecar. The sidecar will often come with a sugar rim on the top. So you're getting just a little bit of sugar when you drink it. So there's certain, there's different ways to add that, that, that little level of sweetness to balance out the drink. Mm, that's cool. Also, another thing, if you're hosting anybody, something you could do in advance, set out some beautiful um, cuts that already have some kind of garnish on them. If you think they'll stick and stay, uh, that's, that's awesome. I like that, Trevor. 
Um, okay, another que uh, question. They want to know, Ben, where are you in Houston? I'm at a, a friend of mine's bar, actually, in, in downtown Houston. Um, I was speaking with Trevor earlier. I had the luxury. I've been, I've been in the bar and restaurant industry in, in Houston for 15 years. And I'm um, at my friend's club right now. Um, we don't have an office here in Houston, but um, he was uh, nice enough to let me borrow um, Vault, it's called. Vault. Cool. Good. Um, and Trevor, this one's for you. Where can we purchase Zephyr only at stores or also directly? Mention those liquor stores. You can get it out again, but also like, can we go to your bathtub design district shop no. and buy it from you? We, it doesn't work like that, especially here in Texas. We have a future Texas. system. So we're distributed by uh, RNDC Republic and they get our product where it needs to go. Um, so from the, from the creation process in the UK to the bottling, all the way to the product coming to New York, New Jersey, and down to Texas. We don't even see the bottles um, until they get to a liquor store or to a bar. So if we need Zephyr for the office, we have to go buy it at the store, just like you do. So it's, it's, it's all for control. Um, and I wish that we did have a, a line out of our front door where we could sell it just like a brewery can sell beer, but it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. So yeah, you have to go to the liquor store or go ask your local bartender about it. Yeah, okay, fantastic. I'm gonna do a last call on questions. Anybody who has them, please put them in the chat or send them to Kimmy if you know how to do that and Kimmy will send them to us. Uh, while we wait, I wanna ask Ben and Trevor one more question. What is your gin drink of choice? What do you do with it? Um, and at, at what occasion do you drink this specific cocktail? I'll let Ben think for a minute. I know mine changes from day to day, week to week, month to month. Um, I would still say the Martinez uh, because it is a lesser known cocktail. Uh, it's I knew certainly you were not say Martinez season because <laughs> it's getting warm outside and that's definitely more of a wintertime cocktail. But a Martinez, if you don't know, is kind of like a gin Manhattan. And so you make it with equal parts. We use Zephyr Black, sweet vermouth, a little bit of maraschino uh, liqueur, Luxardo, and some aromatic bitters. And so it's like a 50-50 Manhattan build that you would normally use whiskey in. And it's really easy to drink. It's very smooth. It drinks kind of like a bitter old fashioned or a, a not as bitter Negroni. It's just kind of right in that area. But I like it because first of all, it's delicious, but you also get other people to try it in there. That's the, the one drink that they try that they, they are shocked that you can position gin in a cocktail like that, that really caters to an aged spirit and it tastes really good. That's how we get bourbon drinkers to come over to the gin side uh, with the Martinez. So I'm gonna go with that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ben, how about you? So I had a feeling you were gonna say that Trevor. And <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm a last word guy, 100%. Um, so a little bit of um, gin, lime juice, maraschino also, and it's absolutely delicious. Another classic cocktail. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on, Ben. Just gin, lime juice, and maraschino cherry. That's and it. chartreuse. And oh, chartreuse. chartreuse. Okay. And chartreuse. Got it. Green chartreuse. So it's equal parts, Zephyr or Zephyr Black, usually three it's quarter a, ounce. Luxardo it's maraschino a, liqueur. It's a really easy cocktail to make at home, lime. too. Yeah. Yeah, those are the tips we're looking for. Okay, keep going, Ben. I think you have another one. Um, that that's, oh, that's my that's my number one. Love it. Okay, good. Um, okay, one more question we have, and then we're gonna sign off here. One person says, "So is Zephyr out of Texas or is it out of England?" Trevor, we are a family-owned company that is based right here in Dallas. The owners live here in Highland Park. Our product is distilled in Birmingham, England, and then imported. So. The distillery where the product is made is overseas, but the ownership is right here. Um, and I did forget to mention with the liquor stores that if you don't, if you're not in the Dallas area or if you want to order online, there's a company called Caskers, caskers.com, where you can actually order online and get a bottle of Zephyr or Zephyr Black delivered to your doorstep. Oh, that's cool. Good. Um, okay. Well, I hope everybody had some fun mixing some cocktails on this Tuesday with us. Um, I'm so glad that our Dallas Morning News loyal 
members have joined us. I'm so glad that we partnered with Zephyr Gin and learned a little bit more about gin and had some fun doing it. So for any other questions you have, um, I'd be happy to answer them or to get the answers for you. I'm Sarah Blaskovich. I'm the food writer for the Dallas Morning News. My email is sblaskovich at dallasnews.com. Um, Google that. Do your best on, on the spelling of it and I'm pretty easy to find um, and at the top of every news story if you click on my name you can find every way to find me on Twitter um, and my email etc. We are so glad that you are here and uh, I hope you have an awesome Tuesday. Thank you so much and thank you to Trevor and Ben for this cocktail experiment. Uh, we have a new event coming up May 27th and I hope you'll join me. It is all about ghost kitchens. What is a ghost kitchen? Should you be ordering from them? Is the food any good? Will these things last more than three months? Um, these are all good questions and uh, I will talk through all of it with an operator of a ghost kitchen with you at noon on May 27th. So I hope you join us then. Um, for anybody who ordered these cocktail kits, one other note, you have so much left. So please go forth, make cocktails for your friends or your family members or your neighbors. Um, and spread the good information about gin and how fun it is. We have a lot to drink this summer. Y'all have a great evening. Thank you to Zephyr Gin and thank you to Sourced. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you.